A very warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this special panel discussion and dialogue on enabling patient-centric healthcare. Before moving on, let me quickly introduce and call on stage our esteemed panelists that we have with us today. Mr. Shivinder Mohan Singh, Ms. Meeta Rajiv Lochan, Dr. Shailesh Ayengar, Mr. G. Srinivasan, we also have uh, Ms. Terry Bressenham, Dr. Ramakant Panda, and Mr. Murli Dharan Nayar. Thank you gentlemen and ladies for joining us on the panel this evening. Uh, we also have uh, Dr. Devi Shetty, founder and chairman of Narayana Hirdalya. Unfortunately, he could not join us in person. But let's uh, start off with some comments uh, from him. I would like to congratulate Times of India and New India Assurance for launching the uh, first dialogue in India about patient-centric healthcare. Unfortunately in India, we have taken patients for granted. Charitable hospitals thought that they are doing a great favor to the patient by offering health care free or at low cost, things are changing. Today, technology allows us to involve the family in the art of healing. When a patient goes home four days after the heart surgery, we are not there taking care of the patient. If we involve the family members before, and today technologies are available for us to monitor the patient at home. And because we have involved the family members in the art of healing in the hospital, we can have a meaningful dialogue with them. We need to make care companion program a very important integral part of our delivery mechanism and we should use technologies to reach out to everyone. Thank you. All right, just a few thoughts uh, that I'd like to uh, put across before we go into the discussion. Uh, we all know that uh, Indian healthcare system is uh, poised to take its next uh, giant leap of growth uh, thanks to technology, increased awareness, um, accessibility, and of course, uh, patient information. Uh, that's on one side. But we are faced with some sort of a paradox or a conundrum because on one hand, you have a massive uh, uh, you know, private expansion of hospitals. You have super specialization. But that also leads to competition and high pressure marketing. So there's a bit of a paradox, and now the focus is back on putting the spotlight on the patient, patient-centric healthcare, which evidently, of course, means a better disease outcomes, bringing down disparities, and of course, cutting down costs. With that said, uh, let me uh, bring it across to you, Dr. Panda, first question. You strongly, of course, in the past have also said that the future of uh, healthcare is based on patient-centric healthcare, making it affordable, taking it to the masses. Clearly the buzzword right now, uh, where do you see uh, health delivery in India as we stand right now? I think the focus needs to change from treating disease to seeking health-seeking behavior. I think this is very, very important. That's the only way I can afford. Um, U.S. spent probably 300... Uh, around 150 billion dollar on cardiac care alone. Still they can't cover, 50 million of the population cannot be covered. And that's only on hospitalization. Forget about at home care. So you can't afford that kind of treatment. The only way has to be more focus on health seeking behavior, changing people's, uh, uh, rather training, teaching people of more healthy lifestyles, food habits, improving the poverty sanitation. Mm. 600 million people are you know, openly defecating. We need to address that. So that is going to change our health care. Otherwise, if we're putting five-star hospitals, it's, not, it's going to cater to only five to 10% of the population. Very expensive medication is not the answer. The same thing can be done with much cheaper equipment. You need to train more people, get better quality doctors, 
to give a much better right. quality care at a much cheaper rate. Okay. I think the focus should be on um, mm. cheaper health care as well as changing people's mindset and pushing them to getting more health, more health seeking behavior. Right. Terry, of course, diagnostic and equipment manufacturers play a key role in bringing down costs. Uh, how are you customizing this uh, for uh, the market here in India? Well, I think it's probably the most exciting market, in fact, around the world, uh, largely because, as Dr. Panda said, we have tremendous needs uh, across the spectrum, uh, both in preventative care clear through the uh, acute care settings. But what is also not lost on uh, you know, a company like ours is that it is a consumer-driven market. It's one of the most unique features of this healthcare system. While we know it has lots of issues associated with that, it does, in fact, force everyone to try to drive for the right behaviors. And we're looking at this in a completely different way, which is instead of taking a high-cost system, like Dr. Panda mentioned, a cath lab, one of the most expensive systems, and trying to strip it down so it's more affordable, we actually go to the other end now and start from the ground up and say, in the relevant needs of what we're trying to do or what need, needs to be done, especially if we go outside of the tier, you know, tier two, tier three models, and add the things that are most relevant to the care of those patients so that it can be affordable. And, and the other piece of that is we have a limited amount of expertise. And I think we're looking at now technology which is fundamentally able to be task shift to someone else because again, in the, in the rural markets, there isn't going to be a Dr. Panda available to, to those uh, citizens. So we need to have ways in which we can bring that kind of expertise, extending it through virtual technologies, and therefore provide better quality of care. It's not just a low cost care, but let's have quality along with lower okay. cost position. Right, so you, you spoke about the entire spectrum, private-public partnership, technology, all of that. Shivinder, in terms of, you know, disruption, so to speak, both in terms of technology, in terms of ideas, uh, when it comes to patient-centric care, what can hospitals really do to take it further? Well, honestly, uh, I think that uh, if you're looking at uh, how patient-centricity is going to change, uh, I think technology is probably going to be one of the biggest levers. I think one of the biggest changes that has happened is that uh, through probably information, the expectation of the consumer have completely transformed. So he's coming to you today, not uh, looking at you simply as the, you know, the be all and the end all of, uh, of what you know, traditionally the doctor was the god kind of concept, uh, versus now an educated consumer, miseducated or otherwise doesn't matter, but an educated consumer from his mindset, saying he knows what is his problem and he knows what to expect. Uh, I think that's the beginning of the technology transformation that's happening in healthcare, and therefore, He's coming in charged with information. Uh, he's expecting a certain outcome. And he's going to measure you based on what his expectation. And he has choices. And technology, to start with, is playing a lot of role from, from an information qua education space. Uh, the second is, again, how much of it you can do uh, closer to home, uh, outpatient, uh, and have information on your fingertips, mm -hmm. allowing you to figure out what's wrong with you rather than just doctor telling you. Uh, I think that's the second space that's uh, transforming healthcare per se. And then obviously the, the treatment-based technologies, uh, which is getting you home sooner with less pain. Right. Uh, so faster turnaround times uh, and less invasive. Uh, so it's health technology is actually changing through the whole paradigm. And as in our uh, own uh, federation we talk about very often, uh, I actually believe that all the healthcare revolution that's happened in the last 40, 50 years, where really the, the whole IT and technology pace has really come into play in healthcare, all the changes in the kind of uh, generations we've crossed over the last, say, five decades, just in the next decade, uh, IT will do to us what healthcare hasn't done to itself. Mm -hmm. So the leapfrogging that's going to happen to the way healthcare is delivered uh, is going to be done by somebody outside of healthcare completely, and not even healthcare professionals. It's going to be techies, to say the word, uh, who are going to actually transform the way we do what we do today. We receive or give healthcare. And therefore, we are in a very interesting band where all of our stakeholders' lives are going to change mm. by virtue of somebody is doing something in his garage that has nothing to do with us. When it comes to public-private uh, healthcare, what more can be done empowering the patient so that you really know what they need? I think that in the spectrum of healthcare, this idea about the patient knowing uh, what to expect and the idea that enlightened self-interest works, it's, it's, it's a misnomer. Actually, if you look at how patients behave, patients are in a very vulnerable position. They are scared, they are terrified, they really don't know what to expect. It is the responsibility of the healthcare professional, of the healthcare organization to provide him with good quality healthcare. 
and i think the main problem that exists uh, with uh, uh, which militates against patient centric healthcare in india today is the fact that uh, uh, standard operating protocols are rarely followed actually standard operating protocols or sops as these are called they are designed to put patients first and sops are part of medicine they are there wherever you want to look whether it is the most basic sops that in an operation theater you should have elbow oper operated taps to see that contamination doesn't happen or whether you use surgical safety checklists to ensure that the wrong patient doesn't get operated on or the left eye doesn't get operated on instead of the right eye those are the protocols which matter unfortunately what has happened in india today is that while all medical students read about it i think all doctors know about it once they leave their colleges and in the uh, practical healthcare space there are very few hospitals which are following those sops the majority rather are not following those sops and the reason is simple because following sops is costly it takes money if you want to put an elbow operated tap that costs money if you want to fill up a surgical safety checklist you need manpower almost every sop costs money and many of them actively put restrictions on the profit that a hospital can hope to make there is an sop which says that please check up patient for fitness for anesthesia before surgery and there are many hospitals which actually don't not only they don't do that or if they do that then they instruct the doctor that uh, the patient is to be tested on the operation table and the implication is clear that he should be certified as fit for surgery now right. why does this happen we need to so look at that hasn't it made the mandatory been made mandatory because right now i think adher adherence to it is voluntary um, uh, you know uh, mr shrinivasan because the uh, insurance companies also face the flack at the end of the day you are just paying the patient bill there are lots of these redressal problems uh, that come up a lot of uh, back and forth over inflated uh, you know bills coming to the insurance company and it all boils down to standards how do you make sure that hospitals actually adhere, adhere to these standards and choose not to see actually this is the biggest problem we insurers face today we we keep on uh, funding the health health requirements but at the end of the day you know when we talk of standards being there standards being enforced on the hospitals the situation is not all that great but we have been pushing for a regulation of hospitals there is one sector in india today which is not regulated in a proper sense i mean people may say there are regulations but then the right kind of regulation is not there for the healthcare providers so i am sure that if there is a proper regulation of the hospitals both at the central and state level if standards are there protocols are there and there is a system of ensuring that these standards are correctly followed i think it will go a long way in improving the quality of healthcare and also in ensuring the health care cost is kept to the minimum so today in india the biggest problem we face is uh, i mean most of the population doesn't have proper health insurance one of the reasons is uh, lack of affordability so i think we need to do a lot on this uh, to make the whole thing viable and uh, sustainable what do you think you can push the government to do in terms of uh, formulating policy going forward i think the problem that we have to still discuss enabling patient centric healthcare despite patient being the reason for their existence yeah. is that i think if you really think healthcare it automatically becomes patient centric the challenge is in the name of healthcare mm. what we have is sick care globally locally everywhere so i think that's where the power from the patient shifts to the providers the insurers or suppliers everybody i think if you really want to make this a reality that is patient centric healthcare i think it start with right from policy level thinking down below to operationalization of with healthcare as the center of your agenda right. if you say that i think the first and foremost point becomes primary and preventive having said that the second is while we do celebrate ourselves being a low cost health destination which is i think relatively a, a great success but still if you look at in the context of the size of the pocket in india we have a long way to go like a, a cost of one angioplasty for example is equal to the annual total expenditure of 90% of this population just to keep diabetic management using not that premium innovative drugs the branded generic good company drugs the cost that is spent by a patient a diabetic patient is equivalent to 60% of what 70% of india's population spend on food mm. so the context of innovation that we need if you want to make it a patient centric while we have achieved a lot i think we still need to do a lot of paradigm shift in that 
And the third, I think the point which I think it's coming out across is assurance on what you get. Whether it is the government-sponsored health insurance that we talk about, which is a great success, and I think rightfully so from a policy point of view. But I think one of the biggest drawback of that is there is no concern on patient safety in that program. It has possibly come more as a result of a political rhetoric. You know, Andhra government won elections, anti-incumbency was fought by YSR and come back. It becomes a politically, you know, relevant tool, got replicated state after state. But is there a process by which you are designing those programs? And in that entire process, what I have seen, I can't see anything which is about patient safety. It's all about economics, making it tenable. Correct? So when you talk about patient-centric without ha having an, a view on that, whether it is in terms of putting accreditation norms or in terms of outcome-based you know, incentivization or certain basic criteria or disqualification, multiple things can be done. But currently, I don't see any of them figuring in the way some, some of these programs run. And, and that's really the paradox that I was referring to at the beginning, because when there's increased competition, there's always a sense of distrust. Uh, you know, the doctor-patient relationship is sort of eroding. There's a, a, some sort of, I mean, world over, there's some sort of distrust even when it comes to pharma companies. As a pharma company, how do you break that mold and go beyond just delivering a drug and delivering a patient outcome? You know, one of, one of the important aspects uh, that we need to sort of take a step back and realize that we are talking about a patient uh, who is suffering from a disease which is intensely personal. It's an extremely emotional experience that a patient and the family of the patient goes through. And what we realized uh, that things are really changing when it comes to even uh, the way in which pharmaceutical companies do research. There was a time when we were really going from bench to bed. The idea was we find a chemical entity, we have the mode of action of that entity, and we see how it works on a human body. Now we are looking at what are those typical symptoms of a patient, what is that biological system which is really making that patient to respond to a certain disease condition, how can we alter that through a therapeutic solution. So the whole approach is becoming more and more understanding how the patient actually behaves, and every patient is quite unique. So gone are the days when you really think of a population-based medicine to now looking at more personalized medicine. So this is as far as research is concerned. But if you really come to the operational side of a pharmaceutical company like mine, where we are producing medicines and providing to all our uh, doctors and the hospitals, one thing that has been very clear, giving a pill or giving an injection is not the answer. There's a whole gamut of things that really go through. You really got to reach out and say, what are the other needs of that patient? So I'm really working with Shivendra's organization. I work with other hospitals. I work with Dr. Panda's hospital. And we say, look, how can we collaborate now to ensure that we reach out and provide support to the patient which he or she needs it today? And that is the big shift that is happening. I think India has a very positive way to look at it. Many of the things have not happened in the Western world. But in our world, we, are, we can take a leapfrog and the whole business model of a company like mine will have to change, and it is changing, where we keep patient at the center of every activity we do. We simply can't start even thinking about my representative going to a doctor without thinking care. The first word he has to think about is that when you go and talk to a doctor and talk about a product or its side effects, don't forget you are talking about a patient who's going to take this medicine. You're going to compromise with that, the healthcare is not going to be fulfilled. All right. I think we've pretty much covered a whole uh, spectrum of things. Uh, I'll take closing comments now. And we've spoken about cost and technology quite a bit because that really is going to be the driving force. Uh, but when you look at India's healthcare system, medical tourism is a big thing here. I mean, people come because of uh, the cost aspect. It's much cheaper here. People come because of renowned doctors. Dr. Panda, but do you think hospitals and the rest of the system really um, are there yet in terms of uh, the benchmark? What can you do to to, you know, really create a holistic system here. So look at medical tourism, we talk a lot about uh, what is the percentage, maximum probably 5 to 7 percent of the most of the hospitals, uh, the best mm -hmm. hospitals also, not more than 10 percent of the patient or uh, the top line is coming from that. So that's not really affecting the care or uh, the pricing, rather it is helps to cross subsidize some of the patients mm -hmm. who can't afford. So I don't think at this point of time it is eating into the space that the Indian patients others would have used. So there's, uh, I think there's enough uh, room currently, redundancy in the healthcare system, especially private healthcare. So medical tourism that way, I think, is uh, indirectly beneficial rather than this uh, 
causing any harm to the Indian healthcare system. Any more closing remarks? How do you really bridge the gap between the busy doctor and the anxious patient, so to speak? I think uh, your topic today is patient-centric healthcare. I think all three words are completely different to my mind, have different solutions. So mm -hmm. if you talk about the patient, I think the single most uh, important initiative with the patient is outcomes. I think when he comes as a sick man, all he wants is the best quality of clinical care. And therefore, outcome is the single biggest metric to figure out right. from a patient. When you talk about patient-centric, you're talking about transparency and efficiency. He wants the best quality of care and the most transparent manner, the most efficient manner. With the price point, I'm not touching about the price point. Either. So you talk about centric, it's about transparency and efficiency. But when you talk about healthcare, it's nice, he's not a patient. And that's the point that Mirli made, that's sick care. When you talk about healthcare, it's purely and completely about prevention. And we have to go down the path of, of being healthy. And therefore, to my mind, if you're looking at healthcare, the biggest solution and the most important solution about healthy Healthcare is 360 degree health, which in our country we don't even talk about. Uh, so when we talk about healthcare, we're talking about prevention, we're talking about not going to a, a treatment facility or sick care or whatever the case is. So patient is about outcomes, patient centricity is about transparency and efficiency, and healthcare is about staying well, not going to a hospital. We should talk about all three things actually, treatment, outcomes, transparency and preventive healthcare, all three are needed. And I would say that the best way to achieve them is for us to put pressure on our political representatives to come out with responsible regulation, which is the only thing actually which can ensure all that. For uh, preventive checks, you need a good health profile of the country. The government is the only resource, the government is the only agency with sufficient legitimacy to collect all that data and to make sense of it. The government is the only agency which can create practical norms which work for everybody, whether it's a five-star hospital or a nursing home, right. and then to put systems in place to take care, see that it happens. As a patient, don't discriminate me. Whether I am rich or poor, I deserve quality. So at every level, if we can insist upon quality, whether it is the government simple uh, primary health care center or a world-class hospital, but as I walk in as a patient, if I have the culture of quality where I can trust what I'm doing, what I'm getting, I think we will create a patient-centric ecosystem. That has to be engraved in, uh, in pharmaceutical company. I take that responsibility very seriously. And same applies to every of stakeholders that are here, that right from government to a private hospital to everyone else. If quality is something that is part and parcel of our every day's living standard, whether it is the way we treat the patient, or the way we do our job with sincerity, I think over a period of time, it's not an overnight solution, but over a period of time, we will create in our country a system which is truly patient-centric, because that's in our ethos. In any case, we believe in pe treating people well. So why not we do that in every day, every aspect of our working relationship? So I think that's where I feel, as Dr. Panda was mentioning, quality will bring down the cost. I think good that you spoke about cost, because quality healthcare without uh, reference to cost is not something suitable for the Indian conditions today. If the healthcare is going to be expensive, unaffordable, I think we are missing out a large segment of the Indian population. Insurance is certainly a solution. Today, only 10% of the health spend comes out of insurance, and only 30% of people have insurance covers. So I think we need to focus on insurance as a way of healthcare financing, uh, and then we need to control costs, certainly ensure quality. I think that's the way we can take care of healthcare. Terry, any closing? I think you've also started a new venture called Health Imagination or something. I think there's three E's to this equation for us. One is around the empathy that we need to have for the patients. And I think this whole discussion today was, was trying to highlight that. And it, the second piece is around the experience of the users of the technology, be that the OSHA worker, a nurse, or a physician. And how do we take conventions of today's healthcare delivery and be much more thought-provoking, disruptive even, uh, to make sure that we're not trying to replicate this Western model, which has right. already been proven to be too expensive and not necessarily very sustainable in that, in that sense. And then the third is around economics. And clearly in the, in the context of India, if we don't find a way to make things affordable and accessible, and accessibility is largely a function of affordability, then we've failed in this. And I think that's, um, again, creating that kind of example in India will be well uh, adopted by many other countries around the world because everyone's trying to bring down the cost of care along with raising its quality. Right.
That's an interesting uh, point to close at. I mean, we have uh, a huge gap, but we have a huge potential of uh, filling it up here in India and setting an example. Uh, not necessarily, um, you know, moving completely away from uh, the doctor knows best mentality, but doing it in a coordinated way to put the patient uh, in the limelight and at the center of the entire health ecosystem. Uh, with that, I'd uh, close this dialogue. Thank you very much, panelists, for an interesting discussion. New India Assurance is the largest uh, health insurance player in this market. And you know, for some time, we have been wondering that the various stakeholders are acting at uh, different levels and uh, there is less of collaboration. And what we realized is, you know, if uh, healthcare in this industry has to improve and uh, people have to get quality uh, healthcare treatment and affordable healthcare treatment, there's a need for all these stakeholders to come together. So the whole idea of this uh, initiative is uh, to bring all the stakeholders together and also ensure that this acts as a stepping stone to the health care provider awards. Mm -hmm.